Hey guys, Aaron Olson here, coming to you from the Tour Striker Golf Academy. Today I'm in our studio at the back of the range here at the Raven Golf Club Phoenix, and I'm going to elaborate on my Building a Better Backswing Part 1 video. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. I'll post it in the link below. Um, basically what this is going to deal with is the shoulder turn and the hip turn in the backswing. If you watched yesterday's video, I used our gears technology to kind of show you a basic template for how the shoulders and the hips can turn in the backswing. So today we're going to lay this out on the ground a little bit so you can do this at home, uh, either on the range or in your, uh, even in your office, somewhere where you've got some carpeting so you can use some of these lines. So basically, I have a target line that's represented by this kind of uh, lime green looking piece of tape. I then have my hip turn line. That's the orange line here that goes at a 45 degree angle. And then I have my shoulder turn line. And my shoulder turn line is in the pink tape here. So I've got target line, hip turn line, and shoulder turn line. Now, if you don't want to use tape like on a carpet like I'm doing here, um, you know, sometimes when I'm out with students on the, on the grass, I'll actually just take my foot and scratch a line in the ground so you can use the side of your shoe and scratch a line. Um, also, we always use aim sticks at the academy here. So I've got this handy thing, it's called the golfer's tool, toolbox. So I could simply put one of these aim sticks into the golfer's toolbox, which is slick, and put this down so I've got a target line. And now that I have my target line, I can put this at a perpendicular or right angle to that target line, and I now have my 90 degree shoulder turn line. So this is a good thing to use as a reference, and then you could simply just put a club or a stick down here at a 45 degree angle, so now I've got my hip turn line. So um, that's how I would do it out on the range if I was not using this colored tape. So I'm going to pull this stuff away from the tape grid on the ground so that we can get a better look at it and kind of use the colors to help us. So um, basically what we see and what we teach here at the academy is uh, roughly a 45 degree hip turn. So this is a good way to model it. So if I was going to step in here and put my toes basically on this target line and kind of put this across my hips here, I've got my hips roughly square with the target. Now we know that all good players do different things. So we've got some people who may have their hips slightly closed, some may be slightly open to the target, depending on the shot they're hitting in the situation. But for general practice, let's go ahead and set this up fairly square with this target line on the ground. Now, what we see on the gears uh, technology is that most players, and we advocate this, are going to get themselves roughly a 45 degree hip turn. So as I turn this, you can see that my zipper here, or my belt buckle, is actually perpendicular to this 45 degree line on the ground, the orange tape. Another way you can do this or practice this is actually put this through your belt loops. And now I have a reference. So as I go back into the backswing, turn my hips, I'm gonna feel like I match this stick with the orange tape on the ground. That's my 45 degrees. Now as the club gets longer, like as I get to a three wood or a driver, um, I may actually start to turn my hips more like 50, 55. And you see guys like, um, well in particular, older players like in the 1960s, 70s would lift the front heel and they would even turn their hips and they'd turn this front knee back even more. So you see that a little bit now with like Bubba Watson, he turns his hips. I've never seen his 3D info but he turns his hips probably 50 to 60 degrees in the backswing, especially with a driver. So that's the first part, kind of from the ground up, we're looking at the hips. So I've got my hip turn lining up with the orange tape, okay? Now, the second part of the backswing is if I'm gonna have roughly a 45 degree or 50 degree hip turn, and once again, this is with a six iron or seven iron, now I need to look at what my upper half is doing. So I've got my 45 degrees here. Now, if I put this stick across my shoulders, and turned it roughly in line with this pink tape. Once again, that's my shoulder turn line, so that's 90. So if I did this just standing straight, I'd have 45 in 90. Now we obviously know that we don't play golf straight up and down, we play on a tilted angle. So there's going to be some left bend here. You can see this stick isn't pointing to the wall in front of me. It's pointing down at the ground somewhere. So that'll be in part two, we're gonna talk about the tilts of these two things. Today is just dealing with the turns. So once again, I've got 45 with the hips, 
90-ish with the shoulders. And if I take both of these out of here and put these in my hands like I've got a club, that's going to give me a couple advantages in this backswing. So I've got 45, 90. Now in a natural kind of way, sometimes we don't have to really even force this. Our, our lead arm, our left arm, starts to move across our chest in the backswing. So it starts somewhere in this area and as we get to the top of the backswing, it moves across our torso, our upper torso. So as I go 45 with my hips and 90 with my shoulders, and I let this lead arm go across my torso, you'll see that this gives me plenty of hand depth. So one thing that we see a lot is um, players who, who lose their hand depth very early in the backswing, or excuse me, in the downswing. So they'll go back, sometimes pretty decent, and they'll start to move this way really quickly. So halfway down, their arm is way outside of the line of their shoulders. So we wanna, we're always working on keeping hand depth. So one way to help keep hand depth in the downswing is to build it in the backswing using hip turn 45, shoulder turn 90, and then a lead arm that moves across the chest to some degree. You'll notice that'll put my hands somewhere behind my heels here. So very, very simple. You don't even have to use a stick. You can use a club across your chest if you want as well, but I could just do it like this. As long as I have these measurements where my belt buckle's pointing, where my chest is pointing, in this case, because I'm squared up with the camera, you know, my buttons on my shirt here are gonna point straight back at the camera. That's my 90 degrees of shoulders. So go ahead and give this a try. Uh, you can do it on the range, start hitting some balls really slowly with it, just to see how you're doing. And, and you can kind of um, imagine if we had this camera view from over the top, which I showed you in the gears video, how these things would look and what the differential is. So. As we keep going with this series, we're gonna work on the tilts, and I'll probably actually get a little bit more in depth with how the knees work in the backswing as well um, to kind of help facilitate this turn. So go ahead and leave your comments, any questions you have below, and we'll talk to you soon.